Hi, my name is Sam Trejo, uh, and I'm an assistant professor at the University of Wisconsin-Madison. And today I'm going to talk about gene-environment interactions, and in particular, some challenges and recent developments that I've been a part of uh, sort of on this front. I'll talk about two papers, one that recently came out in Sociological Science, um, and one that's posted on BioArchive, both led by Ben Doming and Elliot tucker Drob. So in G by E research, we're interested really in beta-3 here. Um, we have beta-1, a genetic effect, beta-2, an environmental effect, and then beta-3 is uh, an interaction term. So does the effect of genes, is it modified by uh, some environment? So can we improve G by inference by paying attention, you know, more careful attention to the distribution of the outcome variable? I'll first talk about course and outcomes. So what we're asking, what if YI is dichotomous or discrete and it's been coarsened from some underlying continuous distribution? Y star here on the left is um, the underlying continuous variable that sort of um, Y is coarsened uh, using. And then um, PGS sort of on the X axis is just a polygenic score. Uh, and the key thing is these uh, black and red parallel lines kind of stretching from the bottom left to the top right. Um, you're seeing that the relationship between polygenic score and the underlying variable Y star um, is parallel. So it's identical for you know, the high environment and the low environment. Um, so any sort of uh, G by E is just a general environment here. Um, and but like the key insight here is that so there's no g by e uh, in a sort of linear sense right now um, but if we were to course in y star uh, into y at this blue line above and below then we actually could detect g by e using a linear probability model uh, so we have to be mindful of that next we'll talk about heteroscopicity and in particular we're focusing on this ei part what if the iid assumption of normal linear models is not met on the x-axis here, we have some continuous environment, and on the y-axis, we have a phenotype. Um, and then the colored lines represent kind of the average values uh, for of the phenotype for you know the high polygenic score, average polygenic score, low polygenic score. Um, and the key thing to realize here is we see the classic kind of heteroscedasticity where across the measured environment, as you move from left to right, the dispersion of the dots kind of widens, um, the funnel plot, you know, if you will. And then um, because of that, uh, the, the distance between the green, blue, and red lines increases, which is actually G by E, right? Like that's what the model's gonna detect. Um, and so if, so sometimes you can uh, arise with G by E just from uh, greater heteroscedastic effects on the overall distribution. And you have to be mindful of that. And uh, we develop a model that's sensitive to it.